Okay, so we've looked at the MQSC, and now let's move on to the MQ Explorer. So to start MQ Explorer, you just click on the Start menu, and then type in MQ Explorer, and then you can run it from here. So what what would you do in here? Well, first of all, let's take a look at the GUI itself. So you start out, you see this MQ WebSphere MQ, uh, and by the way, this is in what's called the Eclipse system. So Eclipse is a software product that IBM wrote, and it is Java based, and it and in fact most of the CEFM GUI based systems are using Eclipse to, to show you graphical stuff and this is uh, no exception so y you can look at more of that if you're interested in, in through here uh, and also if you search online but essentially what you would do is you go to your queue managers there are many things you could do is queue manager clusters and there's JMS administered objects and managed file transfer and so on but really 99% of your time you're going to be in here queue managers and then specifically on your queue and if you needed so how did this queue get in here this is a remote queue this should look familiar by the way 9997 we saw that before when we did the MQSC commands in that video uh, if you right click here if you're wondering how did this get here you well you right click on it you click add remote uh, queue manager and then you can type in the name of your queue manager so in the case of the one we have we did this and then we went here and we typed in the name of the server and you can see it's right there CFM server IBM com and and port number obviously that was 9997 and you get the idea you type in this information hit next and then you know you'll create this entry now what would you do in here well you typically, again, the idea behind the MQ Explorer is very similar to MQSC. You're, you're working at a relatively low level. What do I mean by that? I mean that you are, you know, you're looking at message-oriented middleware, MOM, service-oriented architecture, this SOA. You're really looking at the plumbing of CFM here, how all these pieces connect together. So that's really what MQ Explorer is trying to do. It's trying to show you what's the name of your MQ uh, what's the name of your queue manager? You can right click and go to properties and see the properties of that queue manager. So some interesting things you can do, you go to extended, you can see how large the biggest message could be across the entire queue manager. Well, there it is, that's basically 100 megabytes, that's how large it could get. And then you have a cluster, repository, communication, events, SSL, and so on. You know, These are the things that you could do to, to essentially uh, administer the entire queue manager. No, not surprisingly and then you could go to the queues and and quite honestly things that you would actually do on a day-to-day -day basis or when you're troubleshooting would be to go to MQ Explorer and look at the queues and then also be sure that you're able to connect over to the queue manager and make sure that you're able to get into channels those are the main things that you would do when you go into a queue you're going to obviously see a list of the queues and we did this already in MQSC but there it is uh, graphically and you can do things like for example you can take a queue and right click and put a test message on that queue and then if the queue is associated with some sort of flow it, it may not actually stay on this queue it could actually be moved around to some other queue or do some other thing but you can put messages on the queue so that's interesting and you can also see the properties of any, of any given queue so you can go to properties and like we saw before you can go through each of these sections and for example under extended you can see how large a message could be on this queue as opposed to in, across the entire queue manager and you can ch make changes to all of these uh, things so just to give you an idea of what's here I'll go through all of those you can see okay so uh, we're going to cover uh, this in a, in a bit more uh, detail later but uh, I created these uh, ESQL simple in and simple out and that's because uh, later when we go into this this is what's called IIB and IIB is a level above the plumbing so to speak it lets you there's really in in MQ there's really no sort of you know intelligence so to speak this is very you know low level low level is basically the plumbing but if you want a queue to talk to another queue and that sort of stuff then you're going to look at IIB and this is a very very simple example of, of doing that and all it does is it says well if you get a message on that queue let me put these uh, side by side so you can you can see uh, what, I, what I what I mean here if you looked at the MQ Explorer and you say well I see this queue it's called simple in well there it is simple in and then on the and it's all it's going to do is move a message from in to out that, that's all it does and those are the matching queue names and you know these these uh, there it is in fact the queue name so th this is kind of the intelligence so to speak behind it if you put a message on in it's going to be transferred over to out you know, very very simple but you get the idea and so if I in fact let's let's go ahead and do a quick example of that if I right click on simple in and I click on put a test message here 
uh, and I say, hello, then I hit put message. What's going to happen is normally, uh, if that flow weren't involved, this current queue depth means the number of messages in the queue. And right now it's set to zero. Well, I just, if I press F5 to update this list, we should see the out, which has four messages in it, should increase from four to five. And actually I didn't have to press F5 because on an interval, MQ Explorer would automatically update itself. And then sure enough, that's what happened. And four went to five. So, you know, that's one of the things you might do. Uh, right click on a message queue, put test message, and you can do that sort of thing. You also might want to do something called browse messages. So you can right click here and browse messages, see a list of all the messages. So here's some testing messages. You can see the one I just typed in, hello, right there. And you get the idea. So this is, this is a common thing that you might want to do. And you can also, uh, if I right click on, say, this one, oh, DLQ, by the way, stands for dead letter Q. So that's a place where messages that can't be delivered uh, could go. This is one that I created. So, uh, you know, you can, and you can do that as well. You can create your own. But you also might be wondering, okay, well, so that's what current Q depth means, the number of messages in that Q. So where it says five, sure enough, we should see a total of five messages, one, two, three, four, five. You can tell that by the position. And you might also then wonder, well, what is an open input count and an open output count? So the open input count refers to the number of connections that have come in to this queue manager, the open connections. What does that mean? Well, remember we looked at the MQI and that told us uh, how to connect over to the queue manager. Well, as any application that has done that will be listed as one. So in the case of CF analysis response, we see one and that is CFM right there. It is connected into this queue. And in the case of the one here, well, that's my IIB uh, flow, message flow here that has connected in to that queue. So we can see that that is the essentially the meaning of open input count. So if you had multiple applications all trying to reach that queue, the one would go from one to two to three to four and so on. And then an open output count is really just the opposite of that. In here, you can also look at permissions. So you could uh, click on object authorities and go down to manage authority records. And you can go under specific profiles and then click on the one you want and then see which users have access and what kind of access to this particular queue. And so that can be useful in all kinds of scenarios, especially if you're trying to figure out, well, why did you know so-and-so not, not be able to put a message onto the queue? And that you can take a look at, um, you can take a look at its security uh, across you know these different areas whether people can browse or change or put messages or get messages based on their user roles and those roles are defined on the server of course so th that is a rundown of the main things that you would want to do and, and just very briefly if, we, if you right clicked on the client connections here you would get the same sort of uh, output right Into exits and so on SSL and very similar things similar interface all throughout that is a rundown of the MQ Explorer.